In this video, we're going to go over the small intestines and the large intestines. The small intestines has three segments, the duodenum, jejunum, and ileum in that order. This means that the duodenum is connected to the stomach and the ileum is connected to the large intestines. The small intestines has rules in both digestion and absorption of nutrients. You can see the absorption in the structure of the small intestines. So as you can see in this diagram, the intestinal epithelium are folded. These folds have villi, which are protrusions of the epithelium. Within these villi, the individual epithelial cells have microvilli. All of this structure serves to massively increase the surface area to increase the rate of nutrient absorption. As for digestion, when the pyloric sphincter relaxes, chyme is released into the duodenum. The presence of chyme in the duodenum causes the duodenum to secrete cholecystokinin, also called CCK, and secretin. CCK will act on the gallbladder to secrete bile. Bile has an important role of emulsifying fats. You can see how that works in this diagram. Bile is a salt, and these salts are amphipathic molecules that will take large globules of fats and break them down into smaller globules of fats. This significantly increases the rate at which fats can be broken down by the body. CCK will also act on the pancreas to release digestive enzymes. There are digestive enzymes for each of the four biological macromolecules. Amylases for carbohydrates, nucleases for nucleic acids, proteases for proteins, and lipases for fats. Secretin, which is the other compound released by the duodenum, stimulates the pancreas to secrete bicarbonate. This is important because the chyme from the stomach is at a low pH, and in order for many of these digestive enzymes to function optimally, they need a slightly higher pH, so the bicarbonate from the pancreas helps to slightly increase the pH. The duodenum also secretes enterokinase. Enterokinase has an important role in converting trypsinogen into trypsin. Trypsinogen is one of the digestive enzymes released by the pancreas. Many of these digestive enzymes are released as zymogens, or in inactive forms. So when the enterokinase converts trypsinogen into trypsin, trypsin is now in its active form and will actually go on to convert the other digestive enzymes into their active forms. Okay, so this is the small intestines and their role in digestion and absorption. Let's now take a look at the large intestines. The main role of the large intestine is to absorb water. So in a lot of people with diseases that causes excess loss of fluids in the GI tract through diarrhea, that's generally through an issue with the large intestines. The large intestines also has a role in storing feces for defecation. The large intestines also contains normal flora. Normal flora are the gut bacteria in all human GI tracts. These bacteria are good for humans and essentially they formed a symbiotic relationship with humans. For humans, they produce vitamin K as well as other important nutrients for the body. Finally, those large intestines, at the very end, you have the anus. The anus has both internal and external anal sphincters. This is very similar to the urinary sphincters in the excretory system. So the internal anal sphincter is made of smooth muscle and is involuntary. The external anal sphincter is made of skeletal muscle and is voluntary. So that way humans do have control over defecation.